everyone, welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 12th of May, the year is 2022. We're your hosts, I'm David, this is my lovely bride of over 30, almost 32 years, Yvella. And this is where we share a reflection where we do the life journaling. And Dash is meant to be the time, you know, like on your grave marker, you had the day you were born, Dash, and the day you die. We're trying to make the most of that time in the middle for God. And so we've been doing journaling, life journaling for 20 years. But this year we decided, hey, why not share it with the world? And then maybe it'll be encouraging to other people. So today that's what we're doing with this the reading for the 12th of May, 2 Samuel chapter 21, 22, and 23, and also 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm calling this one The Lord is My Rock. But first year, would you open us in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this opportunity to share your word with others. We pray that those who are listening, Lord, also begin reading your word daily so that you can speak to them and uh, encourage them if you encourage us. Amen. Amen. And this is not meant to be, I guess it could be a Bible study, but this is not meant to be like a college level course that we're teaching. We are literally sharing what we have read about today and what we're reflecting on as we do life journaling together. And life journaling is a way that you can learn to read the same scripture that we and other people around the world are doing and then grow daily. And that's what we like to do. You so, I'll explain that and do this life journaling together. So the Lord is my rock is the title as we use scripture observation application prayer for the soap daily. I'm pulling from 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 2 and 3. David said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior from violent people. You save me. My observation. David sang these words to the Lord when he survived his enemies and when Saul didn't kill him. It was a good reason to sing. Hard times came to David, but God did save him. My application. I too can call on God, and I too can turn to him when times are bad, when I make mistakes, or when I get upset um, You know, with my wife, my family. It doesn't matter. If I was at fault or whether or not I was purely innocent, At these times, I can turn to God for refuge and safety and just to clear my head. God does go on to say, Lord, you are my lamp. And I agree with that, that the Lord is the person that makes my life stable and who is the one I can count on. There are two goldens that we travel with. They're great. They give me unconditional love. But it is God who is there 100% of the time. My prayer. Lord, you are my rock and I thank you for this. Help us to be encouraging to others and to have the right things to say when they need to be heard. Amen, Pastor David. You might want to do a little bit of clarification there. Okay, so like, I'm not perfect. <sighs> I'm not. No, no, when you talked about when you have a disagreement with your wife, yeah. that you may not be at fault. Yeah. So, you know... You may not? Okay, so... We all make mistakes. You've you know, even said to me, there's nobody perfect but Jesus. But, so like when you mess up, or even if you're right, I mess up a lot. You need to just go to God because it gives you calmness in your life. And I remember discussions that we've had where I'm like, okay, I got to talk to somebody. So I talked to the Lord. And sometimes he changes me. And sometimes you will admit He's changed your thinking too. But I'd like to go back to re- to revisit. My wife that. is perfect. My Thank wife you. is right. Thank you. Happy birthday to you in just a couple of days. Thank you. She's awesome, and I got the the best and last bride. Sorry, guys. All right. Did I say that? Did I say the word right there? Yes, I'm so glad that I was able to be your helpmate in that situation. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you're here on the road with me too. 2 Samuel 22, 29 through 32. You, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against the truth. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his ways 
is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who takes refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? My observation. It says at the beginning of this Second Samuel 22, David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Then David starts singing words of praise and worship to God. He tells God that throughout his whole ordeal, God guided him. God helped King David by turning his dark or ordeal into a victory. That through the struggle, God gave King David the ability to endure the hardship. King David trusted God's promise, his word. Therefore, King David knew that God would take care of him. Throughout the entire dark time of David's life, he had no one else to turn to except God. King David knew that God would guide, protect, lead, and direct him. My application, how will I be changed by what I read today? As I have said before, and do not mind repeating myself, I want to be like King David. I want to sing praises to God during the difficult times. I want to trust God like King David did. I want to trust the word of God and not veering to the left or to the right. I want to have the confidence that King David had in God, knowing that God will guide, protect, lead, and direct me. My prayer, Lord, I trust you completely with my life, and I know in my heart that you love my friends and family more than I do. I know my Christians, brothers and sisters are being held in your hands of love. Help me to continue to trust you in their lives as they face, to me, insurmountable problems. May your Holy Spirit give them and their family grace and comfort as you lead them through these difficult times. Amen. We have talked about it this week that we're praying for some friends, brothers and sisters in Christ that have cancer that are battling it. Um, Monette, we're praying for you daily, and for Caleb, your spouse, and other people. But it was awesome. Earlier this week, we were driving on the highway. We are leaving Oklahoma, and we saw a sign. And the sign, a literal sign. A literal sign that said, hey, uh, refreshing. Inspirational. Inspirational, refreshing stop up ahead. And we did. And it was a 190 foot, 195 foot tall cross in the middle of a cow pasture. And it had a life size sculptures of Jesus there were many Jesuses in that field because it depicted different stations of the cross and other things and it was just so refreshing and they didn't charge us to come and park the RV and it was just refreshing to see that sign they also had an empty tomb uh, and the statues that were created were so lifelike Whenever we were uh, looking at the Last Supper, I told you, I said, it's like they're ready to turn and look at us. It was so realistic. And it's kind of like that when you read the scripture. It's so realistic when we go back and we think that the Lord is providing for us, where it says, you know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, we talk about different things. So we're reading uh, Thessalonians chapter 1 today. Um, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. And the things that we saw in this field were created by man. But they represented things that were not necessarily created by man. That um, Jesus came into this world, he died on our cross as a savior for our sins. And it was so good to see that. It kind of brought the life of the stories that we read about in the Bible to life just for a brief moment because we could see um, how he was betrayed on the cross and how he died and suffered as a, a way to pay for our sins so it was really neat to see that sign in the middle of the field this week tomorrow we'll be looking at 2nd Samuel chapter 24 also 1st Chronicles chapter 21 Psalm 30 and 1st Thessalonians 2 we'll get to chapter 2 tomorrow and I'll close this out with part.
Father God, thank you so much for our brothers and sisters in Christ that we can lift each other up while we're here on earth, while we still have the Great Commission to follow and to share about you. Please guide us and direct us and protect us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.